Hello and welcome to Generative AI and Large Language Model Do-It-Yourselfs Tutorials. In this video, we're going to talk about how to get started on Google Cloud Platform on Generative AI and Large Language Models. So let's understand the basics of foundation models. What are foundation models in Google Cloud? Based on large unstructured data, structured data, labeled and unlabeled data sets across the public domain. Google has come up with a series or sets of foundation models. These foundation models are defined under model garden and other things on Google Cloud, which we are gonna discuss in a couple of minutes. These foundation models that have been given names based on the the number of training parameters that have been used to generate new content or to create code or to perform specific use case tasks like generating code text images so for text is text bison for chat it's chat bison for code it is code bison and so on and so forth so the bison or the name of the animal defines the size of the model. So again, not too many details here, but Google has an interesting way of naming their models. And all of these models for now are named as tax bison. We are gonna see in a few seconds. The foundation models found the base, form the base of all these use cases that have been generated. This is known as Google's palm. A palm is a Google's large language generative AI model, which is hosted by Google. And you could use Palm AI to Palm APIs and a lot of other platforms for accessing these models. We'll see that in this series. This series also deals with most of the use cases that you find commonly using lang chains, using other open source and Google AI services we are gonna create this series of tutorials. So as I said, Palm, Palm 2 for text is text bison. For Palm 2 for chat is chat bison. This is under model garden on Vertex AI. I'm gonna walk you through model garden in a few seconds. Embeddings, it is text embeddings gecko. Chirp is the speech model. Embeddings for image, image embeddings. Label detector, this, this is open, open source. Cody for code generation, code completion, and it is known as code gecko and code bison models. So don't worry about the type of models and how it is used. Mostly for the lot of use cases, we are gonna use text bison at the rate 001 model. We'll talk about all of this in a few seconds. And then let's talk about quickly prompting. How do you prompt a large language models? Please look at my previous video where I talk about the basics of large language models. The so prompting means how to navigate, how to ask questions of the large language models. Let's start with zero-shot learning. Zero-shot prompting or zero-shot learning is a, it is a method in which you just provide the instruction. This is an instruction, convert English to French. Jeez, you haven't provided any examples here. And therefore, it is zero-shot learning. You ask a question of Palm and, or the model and the model does, does its job. You have one shot learning, that means provide one example. So here we are providing C Otter, and this is Lutre de Mar. I'm not we're very familiar with French, so pardon my French here, but you provide an example. Now the model knows that you have provided one shot, means one example. And we have few shots wherein you provide the instruction, like in the other previous two, you provide multiple examples, at least one, more than one and then you do the prompting. So this is how, these are the three different methods of prompting and we will go through these details as and when we progress through this learning series. Now follow us because we wanted to make sure that we take you through detailed use case that Google and Google customers are working together and not just Google, but open source like Langchain and other models that we are gonna be using during our course. So. With that said, let's quickly hop over to GCP and understand what's available there. So here I'm going to log on to GCP. This is my GCP console and make sure that you're able to see it. 
you go to Vertex AI, or you can search to of Vertex AI over here as well. So you go to Vertex AI, which is one stop shop for all AI uh, products on Google. Now, when you come here, you would have enable and um, enable all APIs. Just click on that button. You could use this to expand. You would see Model Garden and you would see Generative AI Studio. I'm gonna take you to Model Garden here. These are the models that are available in Model Garden. Now, what is Model Garden? Model Garden is that service in Google that provides you access to all foundation models that we discussed a few seconds ago. And a lot of open source models. Please note that Langchain is supported on Google Cloud. So you have Palm 2 for text, Palm 2 for chat, Palm is the Google Enterprise version model for LLM that you could write your code on. So Palm 2, Palm 2 for chat, text, chirp, which I was talking about, Kodi for code completion, generation, and chat with the code, and a lot of open source models like Bird, Blip, and others. I have seen that Google has a very good ability to, to adopt the open source good things while they build their own. So I would say go to Google Model Garden and look at all the models that are available here. Now, you go to Generative AI Studio with the kinds, kind of access that you have. Right now, I have a public domain access. I see language and speech, but there are other boxes that are available as well, but you obviously you can request the Google Cloud team and they would come back to you and probably provide you an access. But for now, this is GA, public GA, general available, generally available. Now you click on open on the language and let's take a moment to look at this page. You have get started, you have my prompts, you, have, you are creating my prompts on a UI method. In the next few videos and the series of videos, I'm gonna talk to you about how you could create that using Colab or any other you know, Python program, you know, workbench, your ID like VS Code and things like that. So you have my prompts where you could create your prompts and save it and then tuning. We're not gonna talk about tuning now, but imagine tuning as you could create a smaller version of the big palm model specifically tuned for your data. For now, ignore. So let's get started. Google has done a great job in providing examples of practical use cases that could be available. You have chat, you have summarization, classification, extraction, and other use cases. Now let's look at one of the favorite examples that I normally do is the chat agent summarization. Now there is a chat agent summarization here, and then you also have the sentiment analytics here. So let's look at these two examples. And other examples, obviously, for you to look at. Please, please do not hesitate to go in and look at it. So let's look at change chat agent summarization. Now, when you open it, it's a free form. That means you can write any text. If you say structured, it'll give you a form wherein you can input and output. These are basically one shot or multi shot examples that you could provide. We'll see that later. So go to free form. Here, you're going to instruct what you want to do. You say summarize the following conversation from the agent perspective. Now, uh, this is the text which you are seeing here on uh, on on your page, wherein the agent and and uh, the the customer are talking to each other in a chat. Now, what you want to do is you want to summarize um, all of this and ask the model to create a summary for you. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this. I'm going to explain you all of this in a few seconds and say run. So you would see a response here. So essentially the customer wants the free credits that are available over here. Make sense? Okay. Now let's look at all of these parameters. Now let's look at temperature. The temperature is used for sampling during the response generation. Now response generation itself is controlled by the degree of randomness. Temperature defines what, how wild you want to model to think about, think based on your prompt. So 
So lower temperature are good for prompts that require deterministic, means less open-ended or creative, less creative response. However, higher temperature means the model is gonna think wild, it will be more open-ended and it will be very highly diverse and creative. Please note that the higher the temperature, more has the probability for the model to hallucinate. Hallucination means the model provides an output which is not true, or it just makes, up, makes it up. Now you have token limit. Token limit means what is the maximum number of tokens, the amount of text that you want this model to, to give you as an output. Top K, it's a very interesting proposition. So top K selects how the model selects the tokens for the output. Tokens means the, the response. A top of one means you are looking at the most probable answer and top three or top 40 means that you're looking at variety of options on which um, the model would respond back to you. Now let's look at the last one, top P. Top P, P as in Peter, is how does model select the token for outputs? What is the probability? P is probability. K is the, the, the list of tokens, right? So the default of this is 0 0.8. And there are a lot of uh, probability considerations that the model puts together. So temperature, in my opinion, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, perform very, very well in a lot of use cases. And then you have a safety filter. You could block most, block some, or block few. That means you can be more, more restrictive, more restrictive, more open, and this is mediocre. So you would say block few, and this is submit. It responds back to you. Again, this is zero shot. Then let, now let's look at multi-shot, one-shot example. Now, if I go in here and look at Let's look at uh, cust or classification headline. This is a few short example. This is structured. Now, this is a given news headlines, business, entertainment, health, sports, and technology. It provides examples. This is an example, input, output. We are gonna do this exact same example in the next video, wherein we are gonna run it through the code. And then you wanna find out what is this. Just keep it all default. These are the models, text bison 001, code bison 001, and there are other models that based on your access, you would be able to look at. And I say submit, it says business. So I showed you an example of one shot, multi-shot, and obviously, sorry, zero shot and multi-shot. One shot would be just give an example and just have it prove it. So with that said, what we are gonna do is in the next session, we are going to look at different types of code, a collab code that can help you generate. This is the code that we are gonna run through in the next example. And again, I'm gonna share a GitHub link with you, which has a lot of code that you can start learning. And there will be a lot of use cases that I'm gonna generate and you know just talk about it on Google Cloud. Again, Thank you for watching. Keep following this video channel.